Jó estét kívánok! Nagyon örülök, hogy ma este itt köszönhetem önöket, benneteket. Kovács Tamás Iván vagyok, Magyarország, Belgium és Luxemburg akreditált nagykövete. I think I need to speak Hungarian, right? Or English? No? Yeah, I have to speak in English? Okay. Uh, very good evening to all of you. Uh, my name is Tamás Ivan Kovács. I'm the ambassador of Hungary to uh, uh, Belgium and Luxembourg. And apologies uh, on behalf of all of us, uh, especially uh, on behalf of uh, myself. Uh, Brussels at its best, uh, in a sense that uh, uh, we have the uh, uh, European uh, African Union Summit uh, plus uh, two uh, uh, subsequent uh, major storms uh, in Brussels and the combination of those uh, seem to be uh, uh, very difficult uh, uh, when handling the traffic uh, but uh, we are in halfway hybrid mode in a sense uh, of a science club and this is what we have done uh, over the uh, last couple of years uh, that we always had the uh, live Facebook feed uh, uh, so I welcome also all of those who are watching us uh, uh, through uh, social media and uh, this is uh, then uh, could be downloaded and used and watched over and over um, in the uh, coming weeks and months. I'm very happy tonight that uh, uh, this is uh, yet another proof of the uh, uh, very uh, interesting and varied uh, nature of our science club. Uh, two of the founders are sitting there and I'm sure uh, one of them is uh, watching from uh, uh, Vienna. Yeah, I get confirmation. Uh, Peter, servus. Um, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, this has been a great tradition and uh, now uh, it's also approaching uh, 10 years uh, because the uh, Belgian Club of Hungarian Scientists and the Hungarian Science Without Borders lecture series came to life in 2013, uh, then opened by the president of the uh, Hungarian Academy of Sciences and initiated by Hungarian researchers living in uh, Belgium. The main purpose of the club was of course uh, to provide the Hungarian scientific community of Belgium with an informal forum for interdisciplinary discussions of broad interest. And tonight's lecture is uh, a testament to that broadness of the interest uh, because uh, the invited speakers are representing really very different, very interesting, varied uh, uh, subjects uh, of uh, their field. Uh, Tonight is a special uh, science club because uh, it's not only a lecturer that we invite, but uh, he's also one of my friends. Uh, we can listen to uh, uh, Dr. Boton de Sebeny, uh, who will be presenting the challenges faced by the largest global logistic network in the past few years. Dr. Sebeny has a degree in economics and diplomacy from Budapest University of Economics, as well as a degree in law from Ötves Lorán University of Budapest, Faculty of Law, my alma mater. He has been the Secretary General of Post Europe since 2009 and he is responsible for leading the activities of the association implemented in various fields of activities including regulations EU and global, CSR, uh, corporate social responsibility and market and the headquarters of the association is located in Brussels now. Um, some of you may ha not have heard about Post Europe. Uh, I need to explain that this is uh, an association of um, uh, universal service providers, uh, meaning postal services of European countries, and uh, Boton is actually one of the, uh, the highest ranking uh, Hungarian in this city, uh, continuously serving in a very important uh, role. Uh, I hope he, uh, he has not become bored. Uh, over the years, but uh, as I count, uh, this is the 13th year then uh, your uh, Secretary General. Uh, at the same time, uh, he also acted as a long-standing member of the Print Power Two Sides Board of Directors, a Europe-wide initiative of the paper value chain uh, partner industries. And prior to joining Post Europe, uh, Dr. Sebeny had been the Executive Director of International Business and a member of the Executive Committee of the Hungarian Postal Service, Magyar Posta, for six years. Um, this gives me an opportunity to also personally thank him for all the help that he has extended to us in the preparations uh, that are characterizing uh, in uh, many ways uh, our programming uh, at the List Institute uh, this year uh, because as I mentioned the last time uh, this is gonna be a hundred years to the day on this coming Sunday uh, the 20th of February when the first Hungarian envoy has arrived in Brussels uh, to represent 
Hungary. Uh, of course, Hungary had uh, previously a uh, um, diplomatic relationship uh, with Belgium, but that was a different uh, formation. It was called uh, uh, Austria, uh, Austria-Hungary or the Austro-Hungarian monarchy, uh, and uh, that means that uh, the new country after the uh, Paris peace treaty system of the first war ending peace treaties uh, had to enter into new diplomatic relations. And it lasted until 1922, uh, the 20th of February, where when Count um, uh, Voracicki Oliver, who was, uh, uh, you know, part of the nobility, uh, but representing Hungary in Paris, came over and presented his credentials to the uh, uh, foreign minister during those days and in fact until 1964 uh, we only had a legation not an embassy here uh, it was 1964 when the relationship between Belgium and Hungary were raised to uh, the ambassador's level um, so a diplomatic centennial is a big deal in a bilateral relationship and we are celebrating it uh, with great many things on Monday and you're all kindly invited uh, at uh, Rue de Florence 5, not far from here uh, in Brussels, uh, uh, we will unveil a plaque on the building of the first Hungarian embassy or the, uh, the building where uh, Oliver uh, Voratitsky has arrived to uh, represent Hungary and it will be done by uh, Deputy Prime Minister Sophie Vilmis and uh, the Hungarian Minister for Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, Peter Siato. Uh, so we are very excited about that on uh, Monday and that is the opening shot, so to say, uh, which will be followed by uh, great many events, dressing monarch and piss. We have a lot of cultural events uh, uh, focusing on that uh, theme, uh, and we also uh, are planning scientific conferences, um, uh, book uh, uh, reviews or openings, uh, and we have a beautiful uh, ready-made uh, um, summary publication that focuses on the 100 years of uh, diplomatic history. But in that process, uh, we got enormous help from Botond uh, when it came to uh, memorial stamps. Uh, and uh, both postal services, both uh, postal services of both countries, Belgium and Hungary, uh, is uh, uh, issuing a stamp uh, uh, to honor that. And this is one of the first copies that I thought that I would give as an early present, uh, as an incentive for uh, uh, his uh, presentation. And this is how it looks like. I hope uh, this could be seen. Uh, uh, also beyond that. So uh, without further ado, I'm very grateful that you accepted the invitation of the Science Club. Uh, you're welcome and your family is welcome, of course, uh, at the Liszt Institute. Uh, you're, I know that you're a frequent guest anyway uh, of the Science Club and it's a great honor for me to hand it over to you and thank you also for your service uh, in the uh, interest of the uh, diplomatic centennial. Thank you very much, Bertrand. Jó estét kívánok, hölgyeim és uraim. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Indeed, I'm supposed to speak English tonight. My friend Tomás had... Ah, absolutely, yeah. You see, we are in a special world nowadays. So, akkor újra kezdem, tehát jó estét kívánok, tisztelt hölgyeim és uraim. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, indeed, I will have to speak uh, English uh, tonight, uh, but of course, uh, uh, within these uh, walls, within this uh, building, uh, I could also do it in uh, Hungarian, but uh, of course, for the larger audience, uh, we uh, we do all our uh, best uh, also in the common lingua franca uh, of the world. So my friend Tomas uh, has said so many nice words about uh, post-Europe and uh, myself that I don't know what else I could add uh, tonight uh, about the postal uh, sector. But first, and on a more formal basis, I would like to express uh, my special thanks uh, for the invitation uh, to uh, his Excellency Excellency and uh, my friend uh, Tomás István uh, Kovács, uh, but at the same time also uh, to the 
uh, head uh, of the uh, List Ferenc uh, Institute and I understand that uh, uh, I have the privilege uh, tonight to be on a brand new uh, lectern uh, uh, bearing the uh, new logo uh, of the uh, Institute so uh, Adrian Burani and her team uh, so special thanks and last but not least uh, I also would not uh, like to forget to say and express my uh, thanks uh, to to the team of the Hungarian Science Club uh, in Brussels and I look specifically to uh, Edith Sepeshi and uh, Jonko uh, Matroi. So I, I trust that I will be able uh, to uh, stay on the uh, expected uh, level what uh, uh, is desired uh, definitely from a, a full-fledged uh, science club. And in a way it is the first time that uh, I have the possibility to speak about the logistics, about the post in the science uh, environment. Uh, normally, uh, I attend uh, business uh, fora, business uh, meetings, and, and conferences. Uh, but indeed, there are some elements uh, which can be, I think, interesting also uh, for the larger uh, audience. So we live in the uh, COVID times and of course uh, the international uh, postal sector, the uh, larger uh, logistics sector uh, has had to face uh, some consequences of the crisis. We thought at the beginning that uh, we will be able to only uh, speak about negative aspects, but we learned in the meantime that our sector has, been, uh, has shown uh, resilience and uh, we could uh, benefit uh, in certain uh, regard uh, from this crisis. Of course, uh, not forgetting about uh, uh, the bottlenecks, the constraints uh, either. But first, uh, let me say uh, some words about uh, Post Europe, uh, the organization that I uh, represent. So this association, as a Brussels-based association, uh, is uh, representing a 50 three uh, European uh, universal service uh, providers, practically from all the countries uh, of the uh, European uh, Union and also uh, from the non-EU. So we cover uh, like this the entire uh, geographical Europe, mainly uh, one country, one uh, postal uh, operator, but there are some exceptions, uh, Finland, uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, and also uh, the United uh, Kingdom. Uh, all these uh, specific uh, uh, memberships uh, from uh, the mentioned uh, countries, they all have their uh, historical background. Uh, but mainly uh, it's one country, uh, one operator, the national uh, postal operator. So Post Europe as a Brussels-based uh, organization deals obviously with advocacy, but not only on the European uh, level, but uh, also uh, on the global level in the context of the Universal Postal Union. And I will uh, come back to the uh, UPU in a moment uh, anyway. And at the same time, we also uh, manage internal uh, projects for development, know-how uh, exchange. So we try to balance this external and uh, internal uh, aspect and we manage a large network of members so 53 members delegate on a project basis uh, a team uh, members, uh, more than 500 colleagues are directly or indirectly involved in our activities and uh, all together we serve as an association uh, 2 million employees uh, Europe-wide and 5 million uh, actually uh, globally are employed by the postal operators and, and just to show you the size of the uh, industry, so 60 billion items are delivered on a yearly basis by these 53 operators, uh, mainly letter mail in terms of quantity but more and more parcels so the e-commerce the e side uh, is growing. So to the uh, history, 
uh, I promise that I will be quite sure, but in a uh, science environment, I think it makes sense to go back a bit uh, to the beginnings. And if we are in Brussels, of course, uh, we must not forget to to mention the name uh, to the taxi or uh, Turnund taxis, because the postal history, in modern, relatively modern terms, uh, goes back to the 16th uh, century when uh, the princely family of uh, Turnund uh, taxis, uh, they launched the first uh, uh, network, international network in, in Europe, and one of the big destinations, big links, uh, was uh, between uh, Vienna and uh, Brussels, but it wasn't uh, actually uh, the only one. So this is where uh, all started. Of course, after a few centuries, uh, the history uh, has overwritten their uh, ambitions, but the idea to make the international link between the uh, domestic uh, postal uh, delivery operators uh, has stayed uh, in the loop and in 1874 uh, the Universal Postal Network uh, was founded First, the name was Global uh, Postal Union, and then a few years later it was converted into the uh, Universal uh, Postal uh, Union. And just to tell you uh, the idea what uh, one could find behind the foundation of the UPU, which is one of the uh, oldest international organizations, so more or less at the same time uh, was founded the ITU, the International Telegraph Union, which has become uh, the International uh, Telecommunications uh, Union, and the, the Rhine uh, Conference. We also have in Budapest a, a Danube uh, organization. Uh, the Rhine uh, conference was uh, the very first one in this regard, but uh, soon afterwards the UPU also came in Bern. 22 countries signed the uh, Bern Convention and Hungary, as part of uh, Austria-Hungary, uh, was among the uh, signatories represented uh, uh, specifically uh, by the minister uh, in charge at that time. And the long history has started. If I want to put it in uh, into more modern terms, if post-Europe is the UEFA of the postal uh, industry, though for those who like football, then uh, UPU is the FIFA. So uh, we have this uh, kind of uh, direct uh, relationship with uh, UPU, and UPU is also responsible for the universal service uh, provision uh, globally. Just that you understand the concept, it is based on the freedom of transit, and at that time, in the 19th century, it wasn't obvious that a letter or a parcel uh, that was posted in New Zealand would have been uh, delivered one month later in the UK. And this is what the convention uh, set uh, late in 19th century brought to the world, actually that it set the conditions of this kind of interaction between the previously separated uh, delivery organizations. So you could saw some top hat cylinders in the previous uh, slide, uh, the representatives of the different countries at the Stockholm Congress in the 1920s still were wearing this, of, uh, this kind of uh, formal uh, uniform nowadays. Uh, of course, uh, we are all uh, modern, uh, and, and two uh, milestones uh, could be seen actually uh, in this uh, arena. In the 2019, there was a special uh, congress generated by one of the uh, big members of the UPU, the United States, by President Trump himself, in a way also part of the Chinese-US uh, uh, trade uh, debate. Uh, so uh, they generated the restructuring of the entire 
uh, e-commerce uh, remuneration payment uh, system. Uh, they claim that uh, their cost uh, would not have been covered uh, by the uh, by the senders, mainly, uh, of course, those from uh, China. And due to this, we had to organize an extraordinary congress that indeed reformed the system. And then the U.S. so President Trump uh, himself decided that they stay. Uh, in the Union and lately in 2021 it was an ordinary Congress but a hybrid one in Abidjan, uh, Cote d'Ivoire, uh, where a new management of the uh, UPU was uh, elected uh, with uh, Metoki-san, Masahiko Metoki from uh, Japan and Marian Oswald from uh, Slovenia. By the way, this was the 27th UPU Congress and Hungary has not organized any Congress yet. Uh, I'm sure uh, the community would be happy if one day uh, Budapest or any other Hungarian city uh, could host uh, this major uh, event. So now, uh, coming back uh, from the history to the daily uh, business, so when we look at the post, we may uh, think that it's mainly about letters and nowadays parcels, but it's a highly uh, diversified uh, industry comprising uh, also financial uh, services. In a lot of countries, post plays also the role of, of bank, uh, like in, uh, in Hungary, uh, among others, not only uh, by collecting uh, the savings, but also to pay the pensions. It's a highly actual uh, topic uh, in Hungary, but also in, in other countries, and it's still an important part of the uh, revenue. Uh, the logistics, of course, the larger freight uh, is also managed by the postal operators, uh, e-government services, mobile telephony. So we build actually on the uh, largest physical uh, collection, sorting, transportation, delivery network of the uh, of the world and all these services make use of this unique uh, infrastructure this is the uh, the essence of the business logic behind the diversification uh, of the postal sector in figures uh, this could be shown in the following way as you can see uh, in terms of the uh, revenue uh, still 29%, 29.1% comes from uh, letter mail services. It's a declining share if we compare 2020 with 2015. The share of parcel and express is, is growing. Logistics freight is relatively stable and financial services still uh, accounts for one third. Uh, of the uh, revenues, also uh, considering countries like Japan, uh, for example, uh, where uh, the uh, Japan Post is actually the largest saving bank uh, in the world. And if we look at the domestic and international uh, diversification, we see also a growing trend for international. But I just discussed uh, with one of the colleagues uh, here before the uh, event that especially within the European Union, it gets more and more difficult to define what is domestic and what is international. For example, if we order uh, something online from Germany, from here in, in Belgium, we don't really know whether the parcel that will be delivered in Belgium it comes from Germany or it comes from France or it comes from uh, Belgium. So uh, this uh, borderline gets uh, quite uh, weak, but the trend is. Uh, is definitely clear. And if we put uh, these diversification uh, figures uh, into this uh, uh, diagram, you can see if you look at the dark blue part, these columns represent individual postal operators. You see that while the average of letter mail is 29.1%, this diversification level and quality differs from country to country, from postal operator to postal operator. There are operators uh, that have 
10%, 15% letter mail share, but there are others who still have 80 or 90% uh, of their revenue generated by uh, letter mail. So we always say that uh, the business portfolio of a postal operator depends very much on the uh, cultural, social, economic, political background uh, of the country and also uh, on management uh, decisions and diversification can not only mean domestic diversification but we also have uh, large international global players uh, among the uh, postal operators. But of course beyond the figures, when we have uh, the posts in mind, uh, we mustn't forget that uh, we can see not only the post offices or the delivery persons, but also landmark buildings based on this uh, uh, history, the background that I just, uh, uh, just described in the different uh, cities. And I have to admit that uh, these buildings, at a certain moment of the history, they all belong to the postal operators, but uh, they uh, may have moved in the, move, uh, in the meantime to, to other more modern uh, buildings. You can see here uh, Madrid, Budapest, uh, Dublin, Paris, uh, the recently uh, renewed uh, La Poste du Louvre, which is a, a major landmark uh, post office in France. So these buildings represent uh, the history, uh, but at the same time uh, we also have uh, landmark uh, headquarters building, uh, the most modern ones, for example the one uh, in Bonn of the uh, Deutsche Post uh, DHL. And when we uh, talk about uh, posts, then we also have to keep in mind uh, this unique uh, infrastructure which uh, also comprises a large and complex uh, vehicle uh, fleet including uh, bikes, vans, uh, trucks and even airplane. Uh, Deutsche Post uh, is one of the uh, biggest airlines uh, in the world uh, nowadays, but Correos, uh, you can see the picture here, they just uh, have launched uh, their uh, own airline. Uh, so Post means also uh, innovation, again something that we don't uh, automatically see. So from the uh, parcel lockers to the sorting uh, machines to, to robots to all the, the track and trace uh, features and at the same time of course uh, disruption or revolutionary solutions uh, also characterize the, the post. Uh, I can refer here to the uh, drones for example, or the uh, 3D printing. And this is a slide where I could spend, uh, of course, one hour just to explain to you, but this is, of course, the abstract description of what I uh, presented to you in the previous slides. Above, you can see the physical, the operational part of the postal industry from one country sorting center, then the airport, airline, customs going to the other country and then delivery. But at the same time what has become quite important in the recent days uh, and years uh, is the digital uh, aspect, so the data transfer aspect. So if we want to do the track and trace of the items, if we uh, want to uh, have efficient customs procedure, then uh, all this data is needed and we have to interconnect at the same time both the operational aspect and the data transfer uh, aspect too. So as an intermediary summary, based on this I can say that we are quite confident in the uh, postal industry uh, in this regard, based on the long uh, tradition, this large uh, network uh, being among the biggest employers with the portfolio diversification and the trust element, all the surveys in Europe show that the postal operator is among the top three most trusted uh, partner service providers in almost uh, every country. Uh, and this is an asset uh, for us. Privatization that has also uh, defined uh, the life of some operators. Here you see the timeline. It started uh, with Deutsche Post uh, DHL. I'm sorry, I put the wrong uh, button. 
Deutsche Post und dann folgt bei Post in Österreich, ist Post Malta, Post Royal, Melbi, Post City, die Koreas und Post Italiane. The latest one uh, happened in 2016. In the, in the recent uh, period, there were no uh, privatizations of this uh, type. It doesn't mean that privatization is better than the state-owned post because the majority is state-owned. And for example, in, in France, there is no uh, idea or plan to privatize the, the post. It, it's uh, more about the efficient uh, management in these countries. Uh, they uh, opened the capital to the private investors. They are stock-listed companies. Uh, I collected for you uh, the last five years evolution of uh, some of these postal operators, the price on stock exchange. And what I highlighted uh, with yellow, uh, with uh, red circle, is the last two year evolution of the share prices. And as you can see, during the COVID crisis, uh, we have seen an increase in the share price in the case of the uh, postal operators, in, in the case of majority uh, of them, which is also linked to some elements that I shall uh, describe to you uh, in a moment. But before I get to that, please uh, allow me to refer to a fundamental approach change uh, within the postal uh, industry. Traditionally, we had the so-called push model. It was a, a one-way street linear process. There was a big sender or a private sender and then the post delivered it to the addressee and the addressee didn't even know in most of the cases that, that something will arrive. And nowadays we are in a circle process where the addressee is actually the sender. When uh, we order something online then we as an addressee push the button and we launch the process and we are managing the process, we are owning the process so we know what we expect. It, it doesn't come as a surprise and that uh, creates a totally new uh, environment uh, for the postal uh, industry. So we have to manage uh, proactively uh, the clients in this regard so we don't talk anymore of two separated group, uh, the senders and the addressees, now they have to, to manage the, uh, in this uh, proactive way. And we have also gotten into a new environment in terms of the digital uh, platforms. They have become actually our uh, competitors. Uh, of course, uh, these are the GAFAs, uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, uh, Meta, for example, in terms of the digital advertising competing with our uh, direct mail, the address uh, advertising services, but at the same time also having uh, Amazon uh, on the market, which at the same time is a, a big client of the postal uh, operators, a big sender, but uh, also uh, a delivery uh, competitor uh, being present, for example, with parcel lockers, but uh, also with uh, delivery uh, persons. A bit of a, a quiz at this stage of my uh, presentation here, you can see eight logos, the three uh, letter uh, logos of the uh, integrators. And I, I wonder, and I ask uh, this question uh, from you, whether you know which four uh, companies belong today to postal uh, operators. Not all of them, it's just uh, four companies. Two of them actually, uh, they belonged, but they were sold. So now there are four uh, companies that are owned uh, by uh, national uh, postal operators. So if you have an idea, of course, uh, I'm happy to, to hear. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. And two more. Yes, yes. And one more. It's uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, I hear something which is, is it GLS? GLS, yeah, absolutely, yeah. This is the solution and, and they are the owners of these uh, companies. So when we see them, for example, in, in Budapest, then we have to be aware that uh, 
a royal mail is present, La Poste is present, and of course Deutsche Post is uh, present in, in Budapest. So some words about the COVID uh, crisis. As I already uh, told you, at first we thought that uh, it will be a catastrophe, as in all the other uh, industries, obviously. But in the end, we realized that uh, it has uh, played the role of being a catalyst actually in the uh, industry in short term of course we had to face all the barriers all the problems uh, we needed uh, internal uh, reorganization uh, the infection among the uh, postal staff increased closed uh, slow down in operation international barriers both with the road traffic and also the missing flights, uh, they all caused a lot of uh, problems to the postal industry. But in mid and long term, we realized that while the uh, letter mail uh, volumes uh, uh, continued to decline, and uh, it has even uh, accelerated more, there uh, has been practically a permanent Christmas in terms of the e-commerce volumes. What we had to face before COVID only in November and December, since COVID came, every month is practically uh, bringing Christmas uh, volume, which is obviously excellent uh, for the uh, postal industry. But of course, for us, it's a bit already related to the regulatory uh, aspect. The problem is that the e-commerce volume increase doesn't automatically compensate for the loss of the mail uh, volume. So there is a bigger competition, uh, smaller uh, margins, different infrastructure is needed. For example, while you deliver 100 pieces of letter mail by bike, for 100 pieces of parcels you need already a van. So it has a different uh, cost structure. So it is a question how how our infrastructure can bear this cost uh, evolution and also the product uh, evolution and this is something that we uh, permanently have to address also together with the uh, government uh, representatives uh, in the different uh, countries. A positive aspect has been that the post has been recognized by the uh, politicians, by the political uh, sphere, or rediscovered as a key part of the infrastructure beyond the traditionally available universal service obligation concept. Now we have gotten the proof that the politics, the society, uh, people really appreciate that the post has been present even in the most difficult times. We see here uh, some uh, Quotes from uh, Commissioner Thierry Breton, also from the European Parliament by Marcus Ferber, in which they really underline the importance of the post to be together with the citizens under every condition, even in the most adverse uh, condition. And the post, uh, the sector played uh, this role, took this responsibility uh, beyond the normal last mile products we were delivering, uh, testing sets, medicines, uh, also uh, government uh, uh, information with the payment, uh, special rules uh, applied, or uh, we were checking vulnerable people. I think this has uh, shown the special uh, social role of the postal industry. And at the same time, we were also uh, supporting the local businesses in their conversion of their business towards the digital. Uh, during the lockdowns, shops had to close, but of course uh, the, the merchants wanted to go online to make use of the e-commerce opportunity and the post uh, were there for the small and medium enterprises and this is one of our special roles to support the SMEs. For the bigger companies of course they don't need this kind of special help but uh, for the thousands of small and medium enterprises it's good if the post is there and uh, we help them in getting to the market. Uh, this has been the name of uh, of the game. And in numerical terms, uh, some aspects that I already mentioned. So the mail trend uh, has been clear. You see here the dark line. So we lost 31% of the historical mail volumes uh, 10 years ago. This was the peak. 
around uh, the previous uh, crisis, the financial uh, crisis, but at the same time also with the parcel volumes 85% uh, plus the average and in the recent uh, years, especially in 2020, it has been a significant decrease of 15.3%. Uh, uh, Some other figures on the e-commerce because this is the single uh, biggest growth opportunity of the postal uh, industry in terms of the country of origin and the area of origin. The dark represents Europe, the light or the medium blue. Uh, the turquoise is the uh, Chinese origin. You can see that there are countries in Europe, Luxembourg, Austria, which mainly order from Europe. It's obvious, it's the German linguistic barrier that helps them. And there is an, the other end, uh, especially Eastern Europe and UK, that order from outside Europe from China, Eastern Europe, Hungary, Latvia, Poland, and UK, obviously, it's from the US. Uh, and from uh, whom uh, we order uh, Europe uh, to Europe purchases, Amazon, eBay, Zalando, and China to Europe is AliExpress, which eBay, I think it's no surprise, but it's interesting to, uh, to see this uh, also in a summary. In terms of the position of the postal operators in the different countries uh, in Europe, in average, 49% is delivered by the national postal operators of the e-commerce volumes. It's still a high proportion, and we are really proud of that. And the highest ratio market share is uh, represented in Germany and in Hungary by the postal operator, so it's above 60%. Uh, so Deutsche Post and Hungarian Post, Magyar Posta, they do a great job, apparently. But there are, of course, also other countries where the share is lower in Norway, Poland, and in Italy. It's between 30 and 40%. Uh, uh, it all has its, its background, but it is interesting to see the difference uh, between the, uh, the countries in in this regard. And the way uh, e-commerce items are delivered, delivered uh, it also differs uh, from country to country. But still, while we think that a lot of items are delivered already by uh, parcel lockers or other uh, new modern uh, ways of delivery, still the lion's share, uh, more than two-thirds, is a home delivery, the doorstep, in the mailbox, and in the post. Uh, office. There are, of course, some countries, I looked into the details and uh, to look at the parcel locker, which represent 5% in Europe. In Estonia, it's 44%. So it definitely uh, is linked to the uh, cultural and historical uh, background and the uh, digital, uh, digitalization of the Estonian uh, economy altogether. As we are in Brussels, I would say also some words about the uh, postal industry's EU uh, perspective. So what I want to highlight uh, through this slide uh, is the following. In the past, our main attention 10, 15, 20 years ago was related to this bubble, the postal service directive, and uh, lately it's also the parcel service uh, uh, regulation uh, for cross-border, so the traditional postal item. But through the diversification, through the e-commerce boom, we realized that we have to widen our scope. Uh, the radar screen uh, had to uh, become much, much larger, and currently we have to deal with the digital services, financial services, VAT, customs, transport, environment, data protection, standardization, and this is what makes life here uh, in Brussels uh, quite complex to understand from where uh, this kind of challenges come and, and which direction uh, we have to, uh, to go. Just to go back, one more thing that I would like to highlight. In the center, we have the European uh, Green Deal, which acts also nowadays as a green filter for all the uh, actions of the uh, European Commission and European inst institutions. So uh, this green test uh, 
is being done for all the files, uh, uh, legislative uh, files. And of course, the Green Deal uh, has to be uh, also transposed into our life. All the major postal operators have implemented the green aspect uh, into their uh, strategy. You can see some uh, concrete quotes from Deutsche Post, uh, La Post, uh, PostNL, and uh, Ampost uh, CEOs, but uh, this characterizes practically uh, all the companies, uh, especially uh, within the uh, EU. And Post Europe, uh, as an industry association, is building its own sustainability uh, vision, which is not only environmental sustainability, but also economic and social uh, sustainability, uh, looking uh, also at our uh, social uh, dimension that I presented to you earlier. And this uh, kind of work uh, requires a permanent uh, cooperation uh, on the commissioner's uh, level uh, with the key decision makers. Uh, a nice story, I can say, a nice story started already with uh, Michel uh, Barrier, who later uh, became the main negotiator uh, on behalf of the Commission for, for Brexit. Uh, and his role was followed by Vice President uh, uh, Ansip. And what we achieved with them has been a, an industry uh, initiative, a self-regulation through which uh, we implemented the largest project program of this type in the industry to create a, a concerted a European interconnected e-commerce network. Again, we talk about separated companies, but for this new e-commerce world, we had to develop along these features that I mentioned here the harmonized set of services, track and trace, return solutions, harmonized labels, call centers. So we had to, to build a, a new system together uh, and with the support of the Commission, but based on huge investments of our members. And lately, uh, we also met uh, Commissioner uh, Thierry Breton uh, in the format of a CEO meeting. Of course, it's a new world. It was a, a virtual uh, meeting where we discussed about the Commission's ideas related to the future of the postal uh, regulation. Uh, and coming uh, to the end of the, my presentation, I would uh, add two uh, elements. I talked a lot about e-commerce, but Again, I would like to underline that within the postal sector, uh, letter mail, the paper, still plays an important uh, role. It's more than 25, close to 30 percent even nowadays. And we do campaigns to support uh, uh, the uh, paper usage to preserve, uh, actually, uh, what we still have, also uh, using uh, its uh, uh, efficiency, character, because there are uh, there is evidence that the letter which is sent to the citizens uh, gets more attention from the people than the emails. And uh, this is also good for the advertisement uh, industry, especially if we talk about uh, the, uh, the addressed advertisement. And at the same time, uh, we also have uh, proof that it doesn't harm the environment. However, uh, some uh, key institutions from the banking uh, industry, telecom industry, claim that they save the nature if they don't send letter anymore. And uh, there is a Europe-wide campaign to explain uh, all these uh, aspects, you can see here uh, uh, some examples from DVET and also Financial Times uh, uh, related to the campaign. And last but uh, not least, uh, two events uh, of Post Europe that were linked to uh, Hungary. Uh, I was quite uh, proud to participate in, in both. I'm sure that you can recognize at least one person from this uh, picture. So, Tomás, once again, thank you for having accepted the invitation in 2018 for the handover of a European award. 
to Hungary, to Magyar Posta, in the context of the Europa Stamp uh, competition, and one year later, one of our latest real physical uh, meetings, it was in autumn 2019 uh, in Budapest, in uh, Benzurutza, in the famous uh, uh, Cultural uh, Institute of Hungarian Post, where we had uh, as a uh, we had the Post Europe Management Board meeting hosted uh, by our friends uh, from uh, Magyar Posta. So with this, uh, I would like to uh, thank to you all uh, for the attention. Hope that you like the uh, presentation. And of course, uh, if there are questions, uh, comments, remarks, uh, I am fully at, the, at your disposal. So, köszönöm a figyelmet. Thanks for the attention once again. Yes, uh, of course, of course. Comprehensive uh, presentation. I've been working for the agency since 20 years, but I learned new things. So uh, I'm happy to hear that, yes. No, what, what I, I would be interested how, how, of course, how the cooperation works, because even we are having some challenges uh, working cross-functionally, cross-divisionally. Uh, I imagine that it's, it's a challenging task in some instances to work with 53 countries. So I, what I'm curious is which are the areas where the cooperation is, is the easiest, and which are the areas where it's really difficult to work with 